127. I'm all, if you could put in the GNT translation, the good news. Amen. Because the Bible is the good news. Amen. I, I, I don't even barely watch news anymore because, man, all you hear is bad news. I mean, if you want to ruin your day, just keep turn on the news in the morning. <laughs> I don't wake up. Some people say, man, the first thing they do in the morning to get a cup of coffee and read the news. I'm like, wow. Well, that's uh, it's not too exciting for me. Me to me, I want to open the good news, amen, and hear something what the Lord wants to tell me, not what the world's telling me, amen, because they kind of focus on all the bad stuff, amen. They'll throw a little bit about 2% of good news. The rest of it's 98% uh, kind of tainting, tainting, tat, like tate, tating, how you say it? Um, tated. There it is. Thank you for correcting my English. I'm trying to get that word out. <laughs> but here, um, we're going to read this. It says in Psalms 127. Amen. It says, it's, if the Lord does not build the house, and that could be, we could, it could go, a house, you could look at a multitude of words. You could say you could put your family in it. If the Lord does not build your family, your business, if the Lord doesn't build your business, amen, your life, your home, amen, your environment. The work of the builders is useless. If the Lord does not protect the city, it does no good for the sentries or sentries or the guards to stand guard. It is useless to work so hard for a living, getting up early, going to bed late. Why? For the Lord provides for those he loves while they are asleep. And if you think about that, if you're a farmer, you could plant, you're not making whatever you plant grow. It's going to grow because God put it in it for it to do what it's supposed to do. The same way God will take care of you. Some people, they get so worried about everything. You got to learn in this thing, in this way of life of in Christ, to trust and rely on him that he'll take care of you. Amen. And as you walk and more and more with them and do the things you know you're supposed to do, God, God will provide and take care of you. Amen. I've seen it over and over. Sometimes I, there's months how I'm like, man, I don't even know how I'm going to get through or whatever. But know what? At the end of it, God already makes a way and may provision always comes because you just know that he's the one that's able to take care of it. I had a person come to me, and we'll pray. I haven't started. I'm just saying, I had a person come to me yesterday. They were worried about uh, if it's going to get here on time, something we ordered. He goes, man, you don't know me. I get all, like, work. I'm like, listen, you don't have to stress over this. It'll be here. But some people, they are that way because they don't know what it is not to worry. They grew up their whole life worrying about everything. That's why the Lord says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. I mean, but you got to know you can trust in him. If you learn you trust in the Lord, you won't worry about it. And he'll show you he's trustworthy that you can trust in him. That's why some people, they'll worry. They'll think, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this. or what. Yeah, well, how? Maybe not for you to know, but giving it to God because he knows the how. That's where the faith comes and the trust comes in. Amen. Between that fine line, the Lord will provide and take care of you. Amen. You got to read between the lines with revelation of the Holy Spirit. So he says here, children are a gift from the Lord. Amen. You can highlight that, circle it. And it says they are a real blessing. Amen. So children, what does he say about the children? He said they are a heritage or they are a gift 
from the Lord. The other translation, King James, it says they are a heritage from the Lord. That's like he said, they are the fruit of the womb is his reward. They are an inheritance he gives you. Amen. And so as we talk about this morning, children, they're a gift from God. But what he refers to, except the Lord build the house or your family, you're going to do it. Why do it in vain except you allow him to be in your family? Be in your business. Amen. Be in your as far as home. Praise God. You want the Lord involved in your life. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you and honor you this morning. We thank you for your word this time that we have just to share these words with you, with the people, Father God. We thank you today, Lord, as we know this is a service for you and to dedicate children to you, Father God. We thank you for blessing it. We thank you that you open our eyes to really understand what it is for you to be the Lord of our home, Father God. And we give you the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you the praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So I'm going to briefly share a few things with you. But he says, children are a blessing from God. They are a gift from him. Amen. But it's given us or parents, amen, or families to be able to, because God's given you children, you're required of God how you raise them up. Amen. God isn't going to just come in the house and raise up your child for you, just like he's not coming into the bathroom to brush your teeth for you. Amen. That's something he gives you for you to do. Amen. He's done something already for you when he's a lot. When you asked him to come into your life, he's fully given you everything you need in your life to be able to do what you're supposed to do for the Lord. Amen. But it's up to us to do our part. Amen. We just don't do nothing. Praise God. So here I want to read a few things. We'll go through the word. But in the book of Joshua, he, he says right here in Joshua, <clears throat> I'm going to read Joshua um, 20, I believe 24, I believe 23. I'm going to do to Joshua 23, praise God. It says, Joshua, right here in verse 1, it said, It came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua was old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all the Israel, for all of Israel, for the elders, their heads, their judges, their officers, and said to them, I'm old and stricken in age. Now, this is where he was about to lay a charge, a commandment from them. And even a family, usually when someone's older, they before they go on to be with the Lord, it's good to put the family together and you tell them. You, you tell them what you would like to see carry on in the family. Amen. I know uh, when I talked to Pastor Sol, she said her grandpa who raised her up when he was on his bed to pass, he could, all the children and family gathered together, and then he put them before them and he would bless them and tell them what, you know, he required of them, but pronounce a blessing over them. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. I'm saying you don't have to wait till you about to pass on. You could bless your children all the time. Amen. And so he says here, he said, I have seen all that the Lord your God has done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God, he is he that fought for you. And then he said, Behold, I divide unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God shall expel from before you and drive them 
out from your sight and you shall possess their land as the Lord has promised. The Lord your God has promised unto you. And he says right here, verse six, but be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you not turn aside there from the right hand or to the left, but that you come now to out among that you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, nor serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. So he gave a requirement. You'll have nations around you, but don't go leaving your God to go serve their gods. You know, the world may look like it's all fun and they're having a good time and everything, but know what? Their God isn't the same as our God. And if you truly want a blessed life, amen, you follow the way of what God's word has. The goodness of God is what's going to follow you. Amen. Because people think, well, hey, I can go out, do whatever I want. I want to live the way they do. But at the end of it, you're not going to, it's not going to go well with you. For those who already been in the world and know when they came to the Lord, you know, it's a better life. Some people, they've been raised up in the church and that's what they know. And they think, well, wow, I'm not having fun like them. Well, just because it looks fun doesn't mean it's glamorous. I'm telling you that right now. It ain't always fun. It's empty. It's hurtful. It, it may be, it says the pleasure of sin is just but for a moment. But just like Joshua, which his name means in the Hebrew, Yeshua, it's the same as Jesus. He left a requirement for them, just like Jesus in Matthews 28 left us a, re a requirement where he told us to teach and observe all that he had said. Amen. And it's for a purpose. He does it. It's never he doesn't tell us to do things to hurt us. He does it to help us so we can have a better life in him, a better life for ourselves and for our children, for our family, for the things that we do. Amen. So he says here. But verse eight, but cleave unto the Lord, your God, as you have done unto this day he said cleave that means to glow be glued to him to hold fast to him amen it says when a father when a son leaves his mother and father what does he do he cleaves to his wife amen doesn't mean he leaves his wife <laughs> he leaves his mother and father but he cleaves to the wife amen and that means he's glued to her just like he wants you glued to him, to the Lord. Praise God. Doesn't mean everything's going to be always perfect. Everything's going to be always well. But when you hold fast and you walk with them, things will turn out right for you. Amen. He said all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. And he says here, verse 9, he said, For the Lord has driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man has been able to stand before you unto this day. And in other words, he cleared the path for your life, and he'll make it clear that others won't even be able to stand or take your path away from you and where you're at. Because why? If God be for you, who could be against you? Doesn't mean you won't make mistakes, but if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. So he says right here, one of you, one man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. It is he that fighteth for you as he has promised you. He'll fight for your family. He'll fight for your business. He'll fight for your children. Amen. When you trust and believe for God, I don't care what they're, where they're at, what they're doing or anything. When you put yourself in God's way and trust in him, God will fight for you. Amen. 
He's always cheering on for you. He wants to fight and do the best for you. That's beautiful because God's merciful and he's loving and he wants to fight so he has the best for your family. Amen. Just like a, a father, he wants to fight for his family, do the thing that's right, do what's right as a father or a parent, amen, for the family, mother or father, amen, for the children. But that's what God wants to do for us as well, amen. And so he says here, he said, take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God, amen. And he, he said he wants us to love and cleave to God. Praise God. But part of it is allowing God to build your home, to build your house. And the way you do it, amen, you give the word. You bring them to church, amen. You share the word of God with your family. You pray with them, amen. And so... He says here, there's a lot more that when it goes on than when he uh, talked about, but one of the things Joshua did say, which a lot of us quote, amen? <laughs> but he says, he talks about that the people, when he gave them the command and everything, he said <clears throat> that, praise God, but he says how he talks about as for me and my house, he said, we going to serve the Lord. Amen. He, he, that's one thing, Joshua, when you read it, a lot of people quote it, but he, he brings that about and he tells them that, you know, you could serve, you could choose you this day whom you'll serve. But he says, hmm, yeah. In 24, 14, amen. But he says here, we got the kids. See, they're already ready. They're talking. He says, now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity, being genuine and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. I don't care what family you came from or what your family did or what background they had. That doesn't have to reflect who you are and what your identity is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because when you give your life to the Lord, you're not no longer whatever your background was. Amen. The background that you have now is through Christ Jesus. Amen. It, because he said when you're born, you're no longer born of the will of man or born of the flesh or born of the blood of man, but you're born from God. So your identity isn't your family anymore. Your identity is in Christ, in God. Amen. That's what you got to look at. The, I, I'm not saying everyone that you, people have backgrounds that weren't always great. Some have generational families that love the Lord. And that's a honorable, a noble thing. That's a good thing. But if you didn't have that, it doesn't mean it doesn't have to start, start, start. Or it doesn't have to continue what you had. You can change that by being in Christ Jesus and allowing his, his lordship to be lord over your home. Amen? That's where it can start. And the bloodline draws right with Jesus Christ. So G Joshua says this. He said, and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord... Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. And in other words, the land that you dwell in, they said it was the Amorites, but now God gave you that land. Why would you want to go back to what they already had before in whose land you dwell? But as for me and my house we will serve the Lord. Amen. 
And that's one thing you got to say. People put that and posted Joshua 24, 15. They put it on their house. I've seen people, a big old house with the concrete, and they'll have it right written and inscribed saying Joshua 24, 15. I even seen it with Proverbs. And then I, I saw one guy, he built a house. It was up north. He says, he said, the Lord is the builder and maker of all things. And this, that was a cool one on the front of his house. I mean, it was in his doorway up at the top in cement that the scripture was installed in there. Uh, he could do it. He was a builder. So he was letting them know my builder and maker is God. Amen. But I want you to see something because Joshua, when he finished up and he told the children of Israel what to do, you go right to the next book. And it's the book of Judges. And the book of Judges, when you read it, it says, these did everything that was right in their own eyes. I mean, it just came from a point where God gave them and promised them everything, and they gave, God gave it to them. They had rest in their land. But then later on, it says they forgot God. And I want you to see something here in the book of Judges, chapter 2, in verse 6. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance. That's a blessed thing. You, you get an inheritance, and God promised you what he said he was going to do, and he kept his promise. And they went into their inheritance to possess the land. Amen. Because God was with them, fighting them with them. And they got to have rest and got to possess the land that God told them to go ahead and possess. Did they have to do something? Yeah, they had to go take it. But God was there with them while they did it. Amen. Where no man was able to stop them or take it from them. That's why if God is with you and he's for you, no man can stop you. Doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter how big it is or what it seems like, God is big enough to take care of it for you. Amen. So it says here, and the people served the Lord all the days of what? Joshua, like Yeshua, Jesus, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Now, has Jesus stopped doing great works? No, because he said greater works will you do than all these when Jesus was walking the earth. He's still doing it. Amen. He does it through us, through his people. Praise God. And look at what it says. And Joshua, the son of Nun, not a nun, you know, who wears the head garment and all that. No, but it says the servant of the Lord died being 110 years old. He lived a good age. We got people living 110. Uh, one who's like a mom to me, she just turned 90. She looks like she's about 70. I got to call her and say happy birthday. But she's just turned 90. Forgive me. Forgive me if I didn't. But I got a call her was this week and uh, she just turned 90. But she looks she's doing dance classes right now and stuff. She's 90 and doing like a uh, dance. She takes she shows him. Everyone looks at her. She's 90, does dance classes and outdoes some of the people way younger than her. But uh, here it says Joshua was 110 years old and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in, Tim in Timnath Aharis, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gash. And also the generation, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. In other words, they passed too. I want you to see something pretty clear here. There arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. That's a sad thing. Because you wonder why, how did they not know the Lord or the works that he did? Well, it had to fall on those before him that didn't teach the children to know the Lord and to know his works of what he did for them. That's what ended up happening. 
because this is a generation that rose up and they didn't even know the Lord. And they didn't even know what he did for their forefathers. They didn't even know where they came from, which is a sad thing. And look at what ended up happening. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And what did they served, they didn't serve God. They served Balaam. See, if you stop serving the Lord, who are you going to serve then? Because if it's not God, you're going to serve something. Amen? And it's going to be served to you. It's, it's in the world. There's only one or the other you can choose. You could say, well, I'm doing my own thing. Well, you're serving yourself because you're going to still be served in the world. Amen? So that what happened, instead of doing good, they were instead of following the Lord, they didn't know the Lord, and they didn't know what God could do for them because it wasn't taught them. And they began serving Balaam. And look at what happened here. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of bondage out of Egypt and followed other gods with a little g. And what happened? The gods of the people that were round about them. Then Joshua just tell them there'll be people around about you. Don't go after their gods. But know how easy it was for them? Because when you don't have know the Lord, you don't know what the Lord did for you. You can slide right back and do the same thing you were doing. Look at that. The whole generation just passed and a new generation rose up a generation. We're not talking about a couple of people. We're talking about a generation that didn't know the Lord. And they what ended up doing, they served the gods that were around about them. You couldn't tell the difference between the world and the children of Israel. And it says, and they bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And so in the whole book of Judges, you see God raised up judges to help get the people back out of, out of as far as doing what was right in their own eyes. And every time they did what happened, they would be oppressed. Why? Because when the other gods they served happened, guess who comes in? The devil, because he's the oppressor. And they began oppressing all the children of Israel. And what's that to do to get them to go back and serve God? But for them to know him, he had to raise up someone to teach him. Amen? And if we go here to the book of Psalm 78, I'm not going to keep you that long, but I want you to see something, Psalm 78. Can you put it in the GNT, the Good News Translation, in verse 1? This is one of the instructions that uh, they talk about for the children of Israel. It says here in Psalms 78, it says, listen, my people, in the Good News Translation, to my teaching and pay attention to what I say. See, he's talking to people even today. It's, he, he doesn't want, as it says in Hebrews chapter 2, to his words to slip from you. Because we're going to see it's up to parents to teach their children what the word of God says. Amen. It's not up to the school. It's not up to the government. It's up to the parents. Amen. And as a church body, we're, ha we're required to, as we give the child dedication of children, to help do that as well, to hold them accountable to do that. Amen. Now, I got to do a better part, me as a pastor. I might have to call some people and tell them, hey, you know, we haven't seen you all in a while. Uh, you as the father or the mother, you should be coming to church because you're the one that's required to raise up your child, especially when you dedicate them to the Lord. Amen. That we as parents of the body of Christ or brothers and sisters in the body of Christ are to recognize and help another brother and sister. Amen. Or as a mother and father to tell them 
listen, come on. You need to teach your children. They have to get the word of God in them. Amen. Because if you train up the child in the way that he should go, then when he gets older, he won't depart from it. Amen. So it says here in verse two, he says, I'm going to use wise saying and explain mysteries from the past. He says, things that we have heard and known, things that our ancestors told us. See, I, me, I grew up Jewish, so we always, every year, would do Passover. And what would we teach? What would they teach us? To me, I was younger. I thought it was kind of boring because it took a couple hours, but We'd sit there and we'll learn about coming out of Egypt and how God delivered us with a muddy hand and an outstretched arm and how, you know, we offered up the blood of the lamb and how he delivered us as the people of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. But now as a Christian as well, uh, you know, you can teach also he didn't just deliver you from Egypt. He delivered you from sin. He delivered you from the hand of the death, the devil, and sin. Amen? That was a grip on your life. He de delivered you from damnation from eternity. Amen? So you can have eternal life with Jesus Christ. That's the best deliverance. Coming out of Egypt's one thing, because that's good here on earth, but coming out of being delivered from death, hell, and the grave— I'm talking about like that and have eternity in heaven. That's the best because you're not just talking about this life. You're talking about afterlife. Amen. So he says the next verse. He said, we will not keep them from our children. See, he, they weren't they were saying we're not going to do like they did in judges, a generation that didn't know God. And to even know his works. You guys, if you're going to share about God, you're going to share about the what God can do as well in your life. His works of what he did. Jesus Christ, he healed. He fed. He provided. He loved. Amen. And when we look at God, what do you see? He delivers. Amen. Praise God. So you don't hide the works of God from the children without teaching who God is. Amen. Because they're both hand in hand. Praise God. But he said we won't keep them from our children. Imagine a generation today where they're confused and they don't even know their right hand from their left. They don't even know what their identity is. Whose fault is that? Is it the church's fault? from not really standing up and to share what the word of God says? Is it the parents' fault when they could tell their children, it's okay if you could be a boy or a girl, it doesn't matter, you don't have no gender identity? That's a sad place to be. You don't hear it in other countries, but you're hearing it a lot in America, and that's sad where we were a Christian nation, and we put in Christian values to install them in kids, and now they're telling me it doesn't matter who you are. We not even going to have a gender. You're an it. Even the Holy Spirit, you don't tell them it in the Bible. That word needs to be taken out because he's a he. He has a person. God is a person. Amen. So with us, you need to, especially in this time, if you have children, you need to train them up. Because if you don't, who's going to do it to school? Because they don't even know what they're teaching anymore. They don't even, they, they've got bathrooms that are saying whoever. You go to the gyms, they don't even know who the boy or the girl is because they're both playing sports. You got the girls want to be a guy and a guy want to be a girl. That's a sad place for where we've came so far and where we're going now. But whose fault is it? It doesn't have to stay that way. It can change, but it takes a people that knows God and knows the work of God and then installed in their next generation, which is their children. Amen. Because it can, it's getting the way it is now, but it could get a whole lot worse. If you don't think so, you read the Bible, you could see how worse it can get when people don't know God and they leave God and what they really start serving. 
Because the world's going to go the way it's going to go. But as a body of Christ, we have to go the way God says we're to go. Amen. And to go the way God has, you need a backbone to do it. Because it, he didn't call us to be afraid or to be ashamed about the gospel of Christ. Amen. Not ashamed about telling your children. Because I know someone right now, his son's in the school, and he stands up with two others, and they share the gospel to the kids. And it's supposed to be a Christian school, and the kids don't even know it. They're more like a Catholic one. But he shares the gospel with them and lets them know the student, and he corrects the teacher. He tells them this isn't what the Bible says about it, which is good because a teacher should be knowing what the Word of God says. Amen? But it takes someone young that's able to stand up and to be able to share the word. I'd rather teach my child that they can stand up and not be ashamed about the gospel of Christ, have a standard and not be ashamed of uh, the world should be ashamed, not us. Amen. So right here, he says this. He said, we will not keep them from our children, but we'll tell the next generation about the Lord's power and his great deeds and the wonderful things he has done. Amen. That's something to be not ashamed about what God can do in your life. How he can save you, how he can heal you how he can restore you, how he can deliver you, how he can provide for you. Man, what does the world have to offer? What they can steal from you, how they can trample over you, how they can abuse you and use you and mistreat you. Is that what you want in your life? I don't want that. I want someone that will be not taking advantage of me, but put me in advantage. Amen. That gives favor to your life not leave you behind and keep you to last. He said, you'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be above only and not beneath. Amen. God wants to use, he wants you to have friends and people in your life that are not just friends, family in Christ to encourage you to go the right way, to do the right values. Amen. In your life, you'll leave you. People want a blessed life. The way to have a blessed life is do what God says to do. It's as simple as that. Amen? You want a blessed life? If you read the word and follow through, man, you'll see God's best for you. Amen? It's, it's, it's that simple. Amen? Some people want the blessed part of the life, but they don't want anything to do with what the word says to do. You can't have one without the other. Amen? And what else does the world have to offer anyways? So he says this, verse 5, and we'll just read a few more verses. He says, he gave the laws to the people of Israel and commandments to descendants of Jacob, and he instructed our ancestors to teach his laws to who? Their children. They still do it today. That's why when you look, I'm just saying, uh, comparing, if you look at Jewish people, that's what they do. I know. I was around Orthodox Jewish people. That's why Sabbath, they walk. They make sure they're in synagogue all day. They hear the word of God. They don't drive around. They don't even work. Amen. When it comes to Friday, that's it. No work in that. This time, Keep talking about observing the high holiday right now, Yom Kippur, it's, they do Sukkot seven days. They don't work at all. They close their shops because why? They honor God more than they do their job. Some people, they don't, they miss a word. Whoa. Some people are so addicted to work, they, they can't even stop working because where they chase, are they chasing God or chasing money? Because if you're chasing money, you can't believe God can provide for you. I'm, t I'm telling the straight up truth. I've seen them. These are Orthodox Jews. They closed the whole business. I worked with them. They shut it down for like three, two weeks. They're not doing nothing. But know what? God provides because he sees people honor him. And I'm not even talking to people that know Jesus. Maybe I should start shutting down work saying, hey. 
Get that. I ain't going to work no more. No, no. I just... <laughs> no. But if I'm saying no, and I worked for them, they shut it down. Praise God. And if the people want to work who don't know God, they'll be like, let them go work. They can do it because they can work on the day. It doesn't matter to them. But they observe the day and they take God serious. I'm talking about Orthodox. I'm not talking about conservative reform or anything. I'm talking about true ones that are really sticking to what he's saying. I'm not saying they're keeping the law to the D, but they're doing what they know. But I'm just saying they shut it down. I was like, man, you know, they were making money and they, that, they close it all down and they take God literally and they'll be there with the family, with the kids, and they'll be in that synagogue. They'll be in their homes with their family and they'll rejoice. They'll do the prayers. That, it's a beautiful thing. They're up all night doing prayers till like 12 at night and then afterwards they start throwing a party. You want to talk about a nice life? I mean, I'm serious. They're eating, they're playing music, singing, got desserts. They're just doing the whole thing the whole night. I'm like, wow, man. Uh, you know, praise God. But Lord, I'm with you. I'm not uh, going back to the old way. But I'm just saying it, it, it's something people can learn. Because here we're Christians. We have the light of life. Amen. And how hard is it for you to get people just to come to church? These people dedicate their time and take it seriously. And then, man, it's like, whew, you know, it's but it's our responsibility to teach and to train up children and to teach people the word of God. Amen. So he says here, and then we'll, we'll close in a minute. That. Verse uh, six, uh, so that the generation might learn them and in turn should tell what? Their children. It goes from one generation to the next generation to the next. That's what it is. There's nothing bad about it. Amen. It's always a good thing. And so what? That they might in turn show them in this way, they will also put their trust in God and not forget what he has done, but always obey his commandments. See, that's what ends up happening. You do it so you build their faith and they can put their trust in God. They can see what God can do in your house, in your family, and they will remember it. Amen. That's what it is. I'm telling you, when you share it, they won't forget. They'll see. I'm saying as pastors, we've taught other people, and they've been, we have people that are around, but they, if they see the works of God done in your life, they don't forget that. When I saw my pastor, I was with them. I seen what God did as being a child in the Lord with him. I'm saying he shared the word of God in my life, but I seen God use him and use the things that we did. And I never forgot that. I could tell you story after story because God, I wasn't just reading the Bible, seeing what God did for my forefathers. I was reading the Bible, seeing what God can do for my family and what he did in my life. That shows he's not a God of the past generation. He's a God of generation to generation. Amen. To those who believe and receive him in their life. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to leave it there. And we're going to take this time. Praise God. Because we're going to, if you want to sit up here, the, parents. yes, the parents and the family for a minute. And it's the Mamposo family, hey man. I said it right. Uh, that sounds like sounds kind of African, man. Mamposo, yeah, Mamposo, hey man. That's a nice name, Mamposo. So uh, this is what we're gonna do. Obviously, we're having a a children's search dedication. And you're welcome to 
because you all can come up as well. Oh, you're with the little one? Well, you can bring her up and hold her if you like. Because we would like the whole family to be up here. Amen. I don't know if you have a song. You can put, put that up for a moment as they're coming forward. And this is, we're all participants here because when you're in Christ, this is our brothers and our sisters and our children as well. So we're, we're as accountable as we are to one another. We're accountable also for them to make sure that they do the right thing. Amen. Now, I'm not coming over there to the house with a bat and everything. Say, so, man, what are you doing to my children? No, no. We're, we're here to make sure that, you know, if they need help, we're here to help. Amen. The, the, you know, they talk, grabbing hair and all that. This is beautiful. Hey, you. Olivia. We're doing what we did for you, okay? <laughs> And I'm going to read this to start it off, all right? It says here in Mark 10, 13. You're playing this off. Oh. Well, it's, we were doing it before, but you could play a quick thing. How long is that? Yeah, it shouldn't be that long. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. He's prepared a home for me, and someday his face I'll see. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Time I uh, get here, but we're going to read. I'm going to read a few scriptures and then we'll have you stand. Amen. But here in uh, Mark chapter 10, 13 through 16, it says, Then they brought the little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Uh, surely I say unto you, whosoever does not receive the kingdom of God as this little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. Amen. Also another scripture in Genesis 18, 17 and 19, it says, The Lord said, shall i hide from abraham what i am doing for i have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after them after him 
that they may keep the way of the Lord and do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring Ab to Abraham what he had spoken of or spoken to him. That's Genesis 18, 17, and 19. So here God knew what Abraham was going to do, that he was going to teach his children, and that he wasn't going to withhold what God has spoken to them. And not only his children, he said his household after him. Amen. So just like the word says, a good man leaves an inheritance for what? His children's children. Is that just things? That's some of it. But also leaving what God has to install for them as well. Amen. Also here in 1 Samuel 120. <clears throat> No, he's taking time to pull it up. But it says, Han Hania, 1 verse 20, says, Wherefore it came to pass that when the time was come that about after Hania and Naniah had conceived that she bared his son and called his name Samuel because I have asked him of the Lord. And he says, verse 20, 24 through 28 it says this and when she had weaned him come out she weaned him off of giving him milk she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephod of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh and the child was young and it says here in, to verse and they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as my soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by here, thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I asked of him. And it says, Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, talking about Samuel, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. In chapter 3, verse 19, it says here, So Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did not let none of his words fall to the ground. Look at that. She gave her child to the Lord, and the Lord was with Samuel and did not allow one word that he spoke of God to fall to the ground. That's powerful. Amen. Uh, one more right here, another verse, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7. It says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently unto your children. You shall talk of them when you sittest in thy house, and when you walkest by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. Amen. In other words, you shall share the word with them. You should pray with them. Amen. When they get up in the morning, you can pray. And he said, Even when you have dinner with your family amen together not everyone everywhere else but together as a family you know with children yeah you need to speak and when you walk the way you share things about god with them praise god and it says here in luke 2 21 and when eight days were completed his name was called jesus given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb now when the days, verse 22, the days of the purification according to the law of Moses were completed and also verse 40, I'm gonna go verse 40. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, talking about Jesus. Luke 2, 21, 22, and 40. It says, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, go down next 22. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And verse 40. 
And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. As we could stand up, you could come up here, stand in the altar. Amen. And you all can stand right here, like facing this way. Yeah, yeah, facing here. So I'm going to read, and we're, we as the church are going to answer, amen? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, the, the dedication of Isabella, amen? Isabella, I could say the whole name, she's smiling already, Isabella. My pulsa, praise God, Isabella, Sophia, Isabella, Avas, Moposa, praise God. It says, this of the child does not impart salvation to the infant. So we're not doing something that imparts salvation. That's when they get to hear the word of God and begin to know it. But rather it's acknowledgement by the parents that the child is a gift from God and that they want to commit the baby to him. Such a dedication is biblical, for Christ was dedicated while he was an infant, and during his ministry, children were brought to him for his blessing. The family is a divine institution created by our Heavenly Father, and the children are gifts from God, or gifts of God to parents for care, protection, and training. Parents have a solemn obligation both to God and to their children to nurture and train their children in the things of God. At this point, the parents, you call it your hair right now. And so this is what I'm on, uh, me as a minister, I'm going to address you all. For as much as this child, talking about Sophia, is now presented by you for Christian dedication. It is your duty to provide a Christian home and godly environment for her and see that she is taught early the principles of the holy faith, that Sophia shall be trained to give reverent attendance to public and private worship of God in the teachings of Holy Scriptures, and that in every way by precept and example you shall lead her into the love of God and the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses that we have, do you solemnly promise to bring up this child in the fear of the Lord? You could say we do. We do. All right. Ah. Do you promise to endeavor to lead her early to accept Christ as personal Savior and Lord? Do you rededicate your home to the Lord as a place of a Christian environment in which spiritual nature of your child may grow and mature? Now this is to the congregation. Do you as members of this church receive Sophia, Isabella, Ava, Maposa? We do. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I didn't finish yet. And promise to be father, mother, sister, and brother, and friend to them or her. Amen. We do. Yes, we do. Okay. Well, you could say in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do. That's fine. Now I'm going to pray for Isabel. I'm going to lay hands on her. It's so beautiful. It's, it's so beautiful. Oh. Sophia, look at you. Amen. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I dedicate this child 
Sophia to God and his holy service. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you as she is brought up in the ways of you, Lord, that your hand is upon her, that your blessing is with her, and she'll be loved and nurtured in the ways of you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you. As we, we pray, we're going to do number 624. Okay, amen. The Lord bless you all, amen. The Lord keep each and every one of you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to every one of you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you the peace and shalom in your house and your home, amen, in Jesus' name. And here... We have your certificate. We signed it for the days she was dedicated and also a little testament Bible for her. All right? That's for you all. Thank you. Praise God. Bless you. Thank you. Can I hold it? Hello. Hey, hello. Here we go. Okay. There you go. It's okay. I think she like the okay. Amen. There she goes. Amen. Well, praise God. We may be seated. Amen. And we'll just finish it here. Hallelujah. And we'll close by this. For those, I think it's still recording. Those who are watching and with us. Oh, there she is. It, it, we'll finish it this way. If you don't know the Lord today, or may you may have known Him, oh, yeah. and you may have known Him, but today we want to present you the opportunity before we close. As always, that <laughs> okay. Oh wow. There we go. Bring them all together. Oh, there she is. She's doing good now. Woo! Get a whole bunch of them. We'll see. Yeah, that's nice. But we, we want to just take this time for this last moment. If this is something you watching us and you who are here, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, we want to present that to you. If you haven't before, we also give you the opportunity. That's something we can do now. If that's what you like to do, you can come to the altar. What's the altar for? Is to alter your life. Amen. From the direction you were going to turn to the way God's going. Amen. So that's why the altar's here. You know, I never, I don't have a promise. Someone ever wanted to come up here to pray. They want to, you know, while we're having service, they need to pray or something. The altar is always open. Amen. That's one thing we want. I don't want you being like, oh, I'm ashamed. If you feel, if it's on your heart, you want to come down and pray, you can. Amen. We'll pray with you. That's even when we're doing worship, you can come down, you kneel before the Lord. There's no boundary with that. Amen. But this opportunity, if this is who, what you want to do, you want to dedicate your life to the Lord. We're family. If it's something you want to rededicate, you can. Amen? Because there's no shame. Amen? Shame is the world. But with God, it's love. Amen? Praise God. So those who may be watching, if that's what you want to do, we want to take this time for a moment and just pray with you and for you. Praise God. All you got to do is say this. You say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I rededicate my life to you. I ask you to be the, my Lord and my Savior of my life. And I ask you to forgive me now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you today for being the Lordship of my life. Because I decide that I choose you to serve you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me, and I thank you for today making me free. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I just pray for everyone who had said that prayer. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus that they're a child of you. They've been adopted into your kingdom and they are now the children of you, Father God. And thank you for giving them a new spirit, a new heart in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and praise you for them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, we want to give you material. You just email us. You write us. Praise God. We, we get letters from people for prayer from different parts of the country. We'll always be happy to pray. And then if you have a testimony, don't be afraid. Put it on the website. Amen. We got people that will share their testimony. Praise God. We're waiting for a brother to come back down, and he's going to share his testimony of what great things the Lord is doing for him and his family. Amen. Well, we just bless you all. We want you to know we love you. You're an overcomer. You're blessed. You're victorious. We want you to know Jesus, to grow in Jesus, and to show Jesus. God bless you.